get a couple of questions wrong. So moving on to our actual um, scores on the test. This is the percent correct for the entire test by PGY level versus the national medians. And the national medians are the red bars that are above the graph. Um, and as you can see, PGY 1s through 4s all scored below the national median. And the 5 scored exactly at the national median. This is the test composition. So, you know, the test is broken into four um, categories or subtests. Uh, there's patient care, medical knowledge, applied science, and clinical management. And it looks like everyone scored between about 55% correct and about 80% correct. So you'd think, hey, that's not too bad. But if you look at that in terms of the national average, um, where the national average would be zero, we're either above or below the national average. And um, we are pretty much uniformly below the national average, except for uh, medical knowledge for the threes and fours, which was exactly the national average. And uh, the PGY-5 scored higher than the national average on three out of four of those subtests. Our report card score, so report card score is um, it's a national metric that is an indicator of what they call program quality. And basically the idea behind report card score is uh, take out all of the research residents because research residents don't necessarily take the test seriously. Take out all of the preliminary residents, like the urology folks who don't really care what they get on the um, ab site. Um, not to pick on the urology residents, but uh, clinic, the um, integrated CT residents are kind of the same way. Um, you know, they just sort of show up, take the test, and get it over with. Um, so report card score is based on only the clinical categorical residents in a program. And the national average, of course, would be the 50th percentile and we scored uniformly below the national average across the board. This is our report card score trend from 2009 to 2015. Um, so this is the combination or the median of all percent, percentile rank scores, PGY 1 through 5, all clinical categorical residents. Um, 2009, we were at about the 40th percentile. We went up to around the 70th percentile um, for a couple of years. And the last three years have been on a downward slide with the last two years below the national average at the 50th percentile. This year we were at the 32nd percentile. Another program metric that's often used is the percentage of residents who scored below the 30th percentile. Um, so why the 30th percentile? Well, the 30th percentile is sort of an indicator of being at risk for failing your boards when you graduate. Um, and the, that's based on some research that ABS did actually several years ago now. Um, so having a higher than the national average number is bad on this graph. You want to have fewer residents scoring below the 30th percentile. So, you know, from 2010 to 2013, we were below the national average or better than the national average. And the last two years we've been above this year was about 44% of our clinical categorical residents scoring below the 30th percentile on the test. So you can use your last year's score, um, absite score, as a really good predictor of how well you'll do on your next absite score. The correlation between last year absite and this year absite was 0.59, which was statistically significant. Um, and that was for the 46 residents in the program now that we have last year and this year um, scores for. And the cutoff looks like it was about the 43rd percentile. So if you scored 43rd percentile last year, you had a really good chance of scoring below the 30th percentile this year. And interestingly, 31 out of 46 of the residents, so that's 67%, scored lower on the 2015 ab site than they did on the 2014 ab site. So something we did made everybody lose knowledge out of their brains. So practice test is another way that you can kind of gauge how well you'll do on uh, the ab site. Um, I know that a lot of residents think that the practice tests are sort of silly. Where do we get these questions and, and all that good stuff? But uh, we've actually done a lot of research and found that the practice tests are really good predictors of your ab site performance. So practice test number one was a statistically significant predictor of your ab site score. And the cutoff was about 50.5% correct. So in other words, if you scored below 50.5%, on practice test one, you had a really good chance of scoring below the 30th percentile. Um, practice test two was an even stronger predictor, and the cutoff for that was about 60.7% correct. 
And practice test number three was the one that I put online just to see if that would actually work. Um, only about 47 percent, or only about 47 residents took the test, and it was not a significant predictor of absite score. So it could have been related to the question database that I grabbed the questions from, or just the questions that I grabbed. Um, so I kind of ignore practice test number three for now. But practice test one and two were both strong predictors of your absite score. So if you did poorly on last year's absite and or a practice test you kind of know that you're at risk for doing lousy on the app site this year. Um, not taking practice tests is also um, associated with not doing well on the app site. So for practice test number one, for example, uh, three residents didn't take the test, and of those three, two scored less than the 30th percentile, so that's about 67%. Um, practice test number two was about 46% of the residents who didn't take the test scored below the 30th percentile. And uh, skipping any two tests, 67% um, of those residents who skipped two or more of the practice tests scored below the 30th percentile. So like I said before, we don't use the um, absite in any punitive way, so we're going to do something different. We're going to use it in the opposite way. We're going to reward good absite performance with the 80 and over club, as Eileen likes to call it. Um, and so basically, everyone who scores 80th percentile or over, so that's Kareem, Sale, Guillermo, Vince, Abdul, Edward, Megan, and Amit will get a jacket like this one um, right here. So Eileen will email you guys and let you know when the jacket salesperson or whoever's here so you can come get fitted for a, for a fancy jacket. <laughs> and I think Kareem is the only resident that I know of who's scored 99th percentile every single year he's been here. Yeah, well, he, online, he, he, reviews the review he reviews the review books. Whatever it's doing, it works. Maybe we should just model that. All right, so in summary, the overall median percentile was lower than the national average, 32nd percentile versus the 50th. Um, all PGY levels scored below the national average, and virtually all PGY levels scored below the national average for each of the subtests. And, um, of course, you can use last absite and uh, practice tests for predicting how well you're going to do on the ab site. So if you, you know, didn't do well on this ab site, now's the time to start preparing for next year's ab site. The time to prepare for the ab site is not uh, January 15th. Um, it's probably right now. And uh, same thing for practice tests. If you don't do well on the first practice test, you kind of have an early indicator that what you're doing isn't working and something needs to change. Um, so I'll end this discussion just like I did last year, um, the same time last year, um, with a, you know, open up the floor for comments and thoughts about what we as a program can do better. Um, last year, the discussion, two salient points came out. Uh, one was, you know, residents would say, you know, we would do better if we knew what to read before Monday conferences. So I've been doing everything in my power to make sure that topics and reading materials are posted on the Surge Learning website so that you guys know what to read before coming to Monday. And um, the other comment that was made was, uh, you know, we should follow the, what was last year called the ACS Surgery Weekly Curriculum. Now it's called the Scientific American Curriculum. And so we've been doing that um, this year as well. You know, the stuff is posted on the Surge, Surge Learning Portal. You should, it's also in SCORE. And, uh, you know, you guys should be reading that on a weekly basis. And then Dr. Logue discusses those during her two Monday um, conferences every month. So apparently it's not working. So what should we be doing better? You know, last year they changed, last year they changed the exam. And that's a big shock when they changed the exam. Isn't, isn't there a, are people studying wrong? Are they studying the previous style of exam or for a different thing? Yeah, no question. They've been changing the exam every, and significantly, and we had a trend downward, but a significant change in scores. It wasn't like a, a gradual trend downward. And so the question is, is there, are we studying incorrectly for the new exam? So, so that might be true that we here are studying poorly for the, the new exam. Um, that might very well be the case. Uh, whatever it is nationwide, everyone else seems to have figured it out, and we got left behind somewhere. I don't know if that's really the case. I mean, the questions, Dr. Logue has taken the exam like every year for the past five years or so, and um, she says that it, the, the, the test to her feels the same. Somebody over here had a comment. Yeah. So on Monday when we have the didactics, that protected time is not really protected time. It's 
because we're exploring pages, we have patients, like we're out of, we come here, we come from Grand Rams, that's one R, then we do M and M, that's another R, and then there's didactic, which is the third R. So that protected time doesn't become protected time because we get paged like all the time. And we have stuff to do back over there, etc. So my suggestion would be rather than having it in the middle of the day, smack on Monday morning when like stuff has gone wrong over the weekend and we're trying to fix it up. Either we can have it on another day, like Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever, and not in the morning, not right right in the middle of our clinical duties, but something like maybe around 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. That way, that one day a week, the night intern can come like one, one hour early mm -hmm. and leave us, and we can actually like peacefully sit and like do didactics rather than responding to pages or not coming in and things like that. So, I mean, I would suggest that. So, counterpoint to that, that's been done. Um, and that also the didactic stuff or the uh, morning conference has basically been the same for the last few years. And everybody's been busy when they were interns, and that doesn't really correlate with the drop off why two thirds of the program failed the app site. So I understand what you're saying because it is you're supposed to be paying attention and it's kind of hard. But we've monkeyed, we've monkeyed with that before, and it was absolutely horrible. How many days this year have we had didactics? How many Mondays? Yeah. Every Monday since then? No. No? Absolutely not. Really? Absolutely no. not. What, what's happening to the didactics? Uh, interviews for Descartes and what comes in, into play. And then just like for today, it's spring break for, I guess, some people in the world, but not for yeah. residents. Mm -hmm. We don't have didactics today. We should be having didactics today. We We're not. not. There's nothing scheduled. We don't have grand rounds and m and scheduled we today. Don't have So that's, okay, that's really interesting because um, when I emailed everyone who's supposed to be doing didactics today to say, hey, don't forget about Monday, you're to talking about this and that and the other thing, no one responded to me saying I won't be there. Everyone responded to me. Well, no, they all responded saying they will, and they told me that these are the things they're going to be doing. Twice a month. Right? Yeah. Does that happen? Honestly? No. no. How no. many times a month on average? Once. 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 Zero. 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 The three months before outside. Not. So what happens? Do you guys show up and Dr. Logue doesn't show up? Is that what happens? We don't even know who's supposed to be here for that. To be honest with you. Like even the emails, like if you go back and look at the emails for Monday. Like, it doesn't even suggest that we have an intern. Just, to, I mean, to be fair to the people here, like, we're not just stupid. Like, mm -hmm. there's not been any teaching. There's been minimal teaching mm -hmm. this year as compared to other years. Yeah, no, Which is probably years. failing on our, our, us as chiefs yeah, for not sorry. following up on it. But they're also, the ball got dropped on a couple of levels. So that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so another thing that comes to mind would be if this machine will actually work. Right. Yeah, like today, for example, this is what should be happening right after we're done in here. Dr. Logue should be here in this room talking about these things. Okay. Is she? Well, let's see. So like, but you're saying that normally this doesn't happen. Absolutely not. But I mean, I'm not throwing Dr. Logue under the bus. I mean, she's got a lot going on and, you know, like one person should not be in charge of our Mm -hmm. it's just not. Well, we try to spread it out among people. Different types of work yeah. style mm -hmm. But didactics have definitely gone to shit. Okay. It's, gone to I mean, shit. I don't know if anybody disagrees with that. But the other part of that also is it's hard to have protected time when you have perfect patients at a time. That should be a hard. I mean, I mean look, I've had to operate like that, and I'm sure all my juniors are too. And so if they're going to be saying that, hey, you got a karate with you. Every time they say, well, you don't need a resident, that's actual education for another drink. Right? Yeah. Because even if they're doing a simple skin incision, that's a good thing for an intern to do and learn from how to manage a bovie to everything else. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that we shouldn't say, well, without an intern, I can do this by myself and say it's okay. 
because that's a that's a lost educational uh, event at that moment, and it should. And I don't think our, our engineers or us should be put in a position where we say, "Well, I might get a chance to operate because that's being didactic." Mm -hmm. That should be protected both ways. <coughs> so we, we don't lose educational opportunities elsewhere either. All right, so didactics have gone to hell in a handbasket, and. <coughs> I will talk with the people who are supposed to be doing didactics to find out why and they're not happening. Um, the other thing that pops into my head is that's one hour out of your week, right? If that one hour doesn't happen, that should not crater your website performance. Um, you know, there's a lot of this. It is, yeah. It sets an example. You know, we're not fulfilling our end of the bargain, so why should I have to fulfill my end of the bargain? Well. Mm -hmm. like that. And so it gives you the opportunity to think about things that maybe you're not doing on your service, which is also important because, I mean, you may know all about breast if you're on surgical oncology, but you haven't thought about, I don't know, mm -hmm. something else. Okay. She may be leaving that stuff out of her email because at some point I started to do this portion of it right here to make sure that the Monday morning stuff was happening because it wasn't happening previously or it wasn't happening frequently previously. So she might not. Got it. So what she sends overrides everything else. For selected readings, yeah. We didn't have that for it. Yeah. Does anybody know that we have selected readings? No. No. I mean, I appreciate that you put the work into this. I'm not downplaying that, but I mean, unless there's like a link to this site on that Eileen email. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not a very good example, but I don't go to that website frequently. Because, I mean, I also figure I'm going to show up in this room, and there's going to be a lot of other people in this room. Someone's going to know what we're going to do. Got it. So if, one of the reasons why I started posting this stuff here was because I get the information like three, four weeks in advance. And that way it's like here, I mean, you can find out today what will be happening, you know, on March 23rd. Whereas the email that was coming from Eileen was coming in on Sunday night, maybe Friday, something like that. And you guys were saying that's not early enough. Yeah. Exam for everybody, 
how we can spare for junior residents. Because a lot of the decisions you make in the, in the, uh, in the exam is based on what you see in the OR, mm -hmm. to be honest. Well, we would expect that junior residents would score lower than everybody else. But that's what percentile rank does, is it compares you to everyone else at your level. Yeah. I mean, I can't fix the ab site. Are there any other things that I can fix for in here? What do you see as the problem besides us sucking? Is that Edward back there? Yes. And then I'll answer that. Yeah. Uh, I, can, I will uh, echo uh, comments earlier about feeling of not having protected time. I, I think in practice it's not protected time. Uh, it, it definitely affects the interns the most. And so that's somewhat by design and somewhat not by design. At this point in your educational career, you should be a self-educating -educa kind of person, right? And I realize that everything that we've grown up with from, you know, day zero until when you get into residency is very much lecture-based education, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, at some point from this point out until you, the day you quit being a surgeon, you're kind of in charge of what you need to learn. And so I think that's probably the majority of our faculty believe that there should be no teaching. That it's all, it's all on you. You should just go read stuff on your own. And um, I don't think that's the right answer. Well, I mean, that's pretty much how it is right now. And I think as, I mean, I'm, I mean we're not here to, you know, I'm not here to get a, a degree per se. Mm -hmm. I'm here to learn how to be a surgeon. And if you go to any job, when you learn how to be something, you're either learning from someone or getting some sort of interaction. And uh, I mean, we do get kind of a little bit of the sense of 